Earthlings, I'm Trees. Would you like to get richer without a lot of extra hard work? Is that even possible? It is. And in this video, I'm going to summarize the key takeaways from T. Harvey Eckert's Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. My client implemented one of these tips and she went from being 53 years old and not being able to retire to having over a half a million dollars eight years later. And you can do it too. Before we get started, I wanted to disclose T. Harvey Eckert's intro. He says, do not take my word as gospel. Give it a try and see if you can see the changes. If it doesn't work for you, throw it out with the bathwater. The foundation principle of the entire book is that everybody has what T. Harvey Hecker calls a money blueprint. It is a subconscious way of being and thinking and doing around money that you absorbed through osmosis, through what you saw and heard growing up. And it's this subconscious conditioning that is running your life. So he encourages you to look around. Do you like the financial the reality that you see? And if you don't, it's simply the way you've been thinking about your money that needs to change. Let me illustrate an example of this. When my clients start, I have them fill out this paperwork. What did you hear about money growing up? How do your parents think about money? And through this unveiling process, I saw on his paperwork that his brother told him that if you move to New York City, then just expect to be in debt. So what do you think I found when I did his statement of financial position to measure his net worth? His starting net worth was negative 14,000 and zero in investments. Fast forward a handful of years, he lives in the same place, does the same type of work, Nothing has changed in that regard, but now his net worth is over $100,000 in investments. Now, how did he let go of that thought? Did it change overnight? Absolutely not. But the first step is consciousness, becoming aware of it. If he had never seen it, it still would be a crux in his claw. The second thing is disassociating from it by looking for different perspectives. When that came to light, I said to him, is this really true? And he's like, yeah, my brother's in debt. I'm in debt. Everybody I know is in debt. I'm like, I'm not in debt. And this person that you know is not in debt and they live in New York City. I started opening up possibilities. We were both bartenders at the time and I had just started my business. He could identify as equal to me. He's like, if she can do it, I can do it. So find somebody that is not a pedestal person, not somebody you're putting on a tower. Find somebody that you identify with, that has the new belief that you want to adapt. Now, sometimes it is super difficult to bring these sneaky subconscious thinking patterns to light, but T. Harvey Ecker is so generous and he gives us 17 ways to reveal them. And I'm gonna show you how just doing one of these can make you a half a million dollars. The second half of the book is so helpful in uncovering how we truly think in our subconscious mind. And it's called The Wealth Files, 17 different ways of thinking between the rich and the poor and middle class. Now, when I first heard this, I thought, oh my gosh, you're gonna have to be really smart and super intelligent and pretty much a genius. It has nothing to do with intelligence. It's simply thinking that everybody can do. Everybody could do it. My son, who's seven, could do it. Now, what are these secret thinking patterns? One is the rich are excellent receivers. They happily receive stuff as opposed to middle class and poor people have a really hard time accepting stuff. And this was true of my client. When she started, she was 53 and she said, I have no chance of ever retiring. I am behind girl. I said, well, let's just work on it. We have nothing to lose. And quickly it came to my notice that she was an excellent gift giver. She loved giving gifts. She was paying for her grown kids phone bill, but she would never let people give her a gift in return. I said, darling, money is a team sport. In order to get richer, we have to accept the generosity that flows our way. This was extremely hard for her. Being unable to accept gifts often stems from not feeling worthy. It's a self-worth issue. So we broke it down into something really small. 
her kids were offering to help her with the phone bill. So I said, why don't you just say, how about you send me $10 a month? That took her a couple months to work up the courage to put that out there because she felt like she's being cheap and stingy. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, how the hell is $10 a month going to do anything? It's not. But that principle used over and over until it became one of her superpowers made her go from not being able to save anything in her 401k to saving over 20% of her income in her 401k. And this was back in 2012 and 2012 to 2020, the market was just going up, 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 up. So she was able to capitalize on all of that. This complete transformation over eight years netted her a half a million dollars and the confidence to retire. So now let's do something fun. I'm going to showcase how powerful this is. I'm going to pick five thinking patterns and I'm going to tell them to you. And you're going to say either you have it on one hand or you don't have it on another hand and see what hand ends up with more fingers. And the hand that ends up with more fingers is going to tell you a little hint at your current financial destiny. Thinking pattern number one, rich people play the money game to win, poor people play the money game not to lose. And I illustrate this in my financial planning practice like this. Imagine you're playing soccer. How do you win the game? By guarding the goal? <laughs> no, by trying to shoot goals. And it is easy to play defense because you get scared. Should I invest in that? Should I take that course? Should I try that? People are gonna laugh at me. I'm gonna lose all my money. I find even for myself, it's easy to fall into defensive mode. Second thinking pattern of the rich. What hand does this go on? Rich people think big and poor people think small. And I have been guilty of this. As you know, I'm a financial planner and that would be an example of thinking small. I physically can only see so many people during the day. If I was gonna think bigger, maybe I could hire other financial planners and gain more clients, or I could create an online course or something like that. Even if you don't work for yourself, let's just say you work at a company. An example of thinking small, a client of mine used to have. She's like, I would like to be VP of the company, but so would about 10 other people here and they're all equally qualified. I'm like, there might be only one VP slot at this current job, but there's VP slots all over the world. So if you want to have a VP slot, go for it. That's thinking big. I also have another client who loves his job. He's a scientist for, he does not want to get promoted or do anything else. He loves being where he is. He can still think big by making his money work hard for him via investing. He could be heavy on investing. And that would be thinking big. Ask yourself, are you thinking big? Now the third one is a doozy one and I picked it on purpose because there's 17 in the book and I'm only showcasing five here. Rich people admire other rich people and poor and middle class do not admire rich people. They resent them and they think they're greedy hound dogs. Now, why is this thinking pattern going to block your money or make you money? Because you cannot attract more wealth if you think the people that have it are bad and greedy because people generally identify as good people and how you identify will create your reality. So if you identify as a good person, but only good people don't have any money, that's what will show up. The fourth thinking pattern is that the rich feel positive about selling their services and self-promotion, and poor and financially trapped people feel negatively about selling their services and self-promotion. Where do you land? And the last one, rich people think both. How can I get both? And poor people or financially trapped people think either or. For example, a lot of middle class, poor class thinking is, I would rather be rich than happy. Now who invented that? That's the silliest thing I ever heard. Why can't you be rich and happy? And that's the riddle that rich people choose to solve. Now, is it easy? Is it lying on the street everywhere? No, you have to look for it like a little scavenger hunt, but it exists. All possibilities exist. Now, showcase your hands. Which one had more votes on it? The poor and the middle class thinking or the rich thinking? 
you don't have to change them all, but you change one way of thinking and you will see your life get richer. Now, T. Harvey Ecker says, talk is cheap. You must do this one thing or else all that information is going to be as valuable as dust. Now, what is the one thing you must do? T. R. V. Hecker has a couple suggestions. He says, do the exercises in the book, like write down, what did your parents think and feel about money to unearth subconscious ways of thinking that you might have adopted. Also, he recommends declarations. I play to win. I have a millionaire mind and taking those actions. I also listen to affirmations. I'm making a video that's coming out this Friday with ASMR secrets of a millionaire mind wealth affirmations so you could just listen to it it harnesses all 17 of trv hecker's wealth principles but what i personally advise and what i do for my clients is i say pick one way of thinking for example the play to win versus playing not to lose and shift it i have a client she started at fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt they didn't get new jobs they didn't sell their house their lifestyle is the same but for the past two years, they've paid $1,400 like clockwork every month. How is that possible? They invoked this principle, play to win. They thought there is no way in hell I'm ever gonna get out of credit card debt. It's too late. I'm gonna either have to declare bankruptcy or get some kind of amazing job. And I'm like, you're giving away your power. That's not playing to win. That's a defeatist attitude. So we simply said, we are winners. How can we do this? Crossed a line in the sand and said every month we will pay $1,400 to the credit card and then worked backwards into our budget. Was it difficult in the beginning? <laughs> Did they cry a little bit? Yes. But now as we were speaking, they have less than $10,000 of credit card debt. They can see the light at the end of the tunnel and forever for the rest of their lives, it's going to be like giving themselves a $1,400 a month after tax raise. And it all started simply with the principle of playing to win. Till next time, my darling earthlings, ciao.